making a run at it, aren't you? Rolling up a stake and going to Vegas. Welcome to the number one poker radio show in the world. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of poker news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. All right, everybody. How we doing? You know, I'm not even on camera. I'm like, Ruben's taking up all the spot. You got to slide over there a little bit. There we go. Well, it's a. I'll even turn that on. There. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, that's how it works. I just want yeah. more of the spotlight. That's all. That's okay. I understand. You're on the greatest poker radio show in the world. Yeah. I mean, I, it's I, in the world. I didn't realize how big time this was. Man, we are big time. Yeah, we try. Fourth anniversary, guys. Four years ago. Yeah, clap round round of applause. Four years ago, I was sitting in front of a crappy webcam and a horrible computer. I did my first interview in poker with Jerry Yank. Just popped a world champ right off the bat. Never looked back. So thank you to everybody for supporting the show. We do appreciate it. Oh, and here we are at the World Series again. Ruben, what's going on with you, brother? How's it going? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a busy boy. I've got uh, reporting duties for 888 uh, all day today and tomorrow and the next day and for the foreseeable future. Because <laughs> uh, they've got 128 sponsored players uh, from 888 Poker that wow. have won various uh, uh, satellites and, and uh, qualifying tournaments, and of course the, the 888 ambassadors, the, mm-hmm. the more famous players that have, you know, lots of hundreds of thousands of dollars in bracelets under their belt already. And I got to follow all them around and take all their pictures and make them all look good. Now, the worst part about that for you is today. How many players are you covering? Uh, I. I thought I was going to be covering about 10. I've located about four of them, okay. and it's not a big room. So right now I'm covering four players. Okay, so you got four. Four today. How many are you covering tomorrow? <sighs> At least 90. You are so screwed. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not going to be. It, this is an interesting warm-up day for me. Um, it's practice. It's, yeah. Well, it's not even that good of practice. Yeah. I'm kind of, <laughs> you know. Instead of just get, I'm getting my feet wet today, and then just dumping, jumping in the deep end tomorrow. Yeah, it's like putting your pinky toe in and then doing a cannonball. Right, right, right. You know, wow, I feel for you, brother. Yeah, but we are at the main event today. I, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it seems a little slow in here to me today. I, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, there's a lot of uh, empty rows here in the Brasilia room. I'm I agree. Surprised. I was talking with uh, with a buddy of mine who's playing today, and uh, and I said that this is the smallest day one flight I'd seen. Uh, now I ha- I've only been here three or four uh, uh, times right. for the for the actual main event, um, but it's the smallest flight that I'd seen, and I think that the reason my my theory is uh, that the combination of a summer weekend plus a holiday weekend yeah. in Vegas means a lot of people are still napping. I don't blame them either. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's 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 kind of not surprising. But I tell you what, it was a you know good opportunity. Maybe some pros wanted to come in here and try and knock some people off. Yeah, maybe an opportunity missed on day one a of the main event. Absolutely, I only saw a couple of the really big names in the room. Um, you know, I saw I was I walked past a table that had both Gabe Nassif and uh, Doc Sands at it. Yeah. That was like the only table that had two big names at it. How that happened, boy, that sucks for them. Yeah, that's not good for them. But uh, oh, well. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a real quick. Let's take a look at some of those players that we do have on the list that are here. Uh, Andy Black is in the house. Uh, Andy made a final table here in this World Series. Always good to see him doing well. Uh, Barney Boatman is here. Uh, Stephen G. Mike Matasso is here. And I saw a lot of people that went to the Frank Casella party have actually made it today, hmm. which is stunning considering what happened to the Frank Casella party last night. I, I wasn't there. You I, weren't I, there. I, I don't have eyewitness testimony on yeah, that one. Yeah, there was, it was there was a little bit of fun going on last night. Uh, let's see. Kevin Schaffel's in the house. Brian Campanello. Uh, Josh Arie is here today. Uh, Matthew LaPosse is in the house. Mark Radoja is here. Uh, Andy Block is playing today. in Masseri uh, gave the seat, as you said. Uh, Cherish Andrews decided to play today. Andres Hoybold is in the house. Jason Lester is here. Uh, Eric Cahalis, Blair Rodman. See, now Blair, I would expect to be here. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's one of the older guys, you know, the crusty one. Get in nah. early. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm busting Blair's chops on that. Uh, Paul Newey is here. Jorit Van Hoof. I saw Jorit. He is uh, just actually he's right, right, here, right yeah. inside the doorway there. Uh, Eric Seidel is here. I actually just walk into the hallways. The players have hit break. Uh, Hoyt Corkin's playing today. Uh, Fabrice Soulier is in the house. Uh, let's see. Amit Bakuja is in the house. Uh, 
Let's see who else we have. Dario Sammartino, Doc Sands, Billy Baxter is here, Barry Schulman, uh, Carrie Katz, yeah, uh, Lucky Chewy's here, David Bach, Jeremy Osmus, Brandon Stevens. So a lot of a lot of pretty good players here. Yeah, today. absolutely. And and we, you know, you don't you you expect the room to, to have at least some number of, of big names, but uh, it, it's actually not the the biggest uh, I've ever. I don't know how many tables this room holds. Maybe a hundred, maybe a couple hundred. I don't yeah, know. I'd, I'd but there's to... there's at least two dozen tables that are completely. Yeah, empty. I'm shocked. I've never seen that. Yeah, me neither. I've never seen it because usually. You know, well, couple... last year the main event, uh, one of the days, at least one of the days, was split between two rooms. Yeah. And so one of the rooms had empty tables. That's the only other time that I've seen it. But that's overflow as opposed to this, which is. Yeah, I mean the poker kitchen overflowed. No Nobody in there. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I I don't know if it was just because yesterday was the Fourth of July and everybody's just kind of chilling out. And it was a Saturday too. Sure. But well, who knows? We'll the theory uh, that I've heard from most of my friends that that say because it always starts the day after the Fourth of July. Right. Day one A is always less busy. Is is of the three the least busy of the right. three because people are still hungover and sleeping mm. it off. And, yeah. You know they had festivities the night before. We got time. We got another two days. Yeah. Day 1B is the busiest, usually, because it's a good middle ground. Uh, and if people lose on day 1, they want to get out of uh, get out of Dodge, Dodge earlier. Yeah. Uh, and then day 1C tends to be the, the in the middle day. Um, a lot of people like to play day 1C just in, because they expect to make day 2, and they don't want to have as much time in between their days. Like, if you make day 2 on day 1A, you have, like, three or four days to wait. Right. Plus, I, I kind of like... See, someday I will play this darn thing. <laughs> and I, I kind of like taking day one b uh to me because at least you're going to jam a day of rest in there right you know because once you know once we get through it's kind of nice because you'd be going one day off come back for day two your your first day the first day two then you're going to get another day off before the grind starts you know so you get a chance to kind of rebound a little bit from a, a hard day you know very stressful day a couple of times and then you know dive in there and and yeah, go for and it, so. especially for these super long days, you know, these are for the main event. If you've never played it before, it's two hour levels, yep. five levels. That's ten hours of of poker a day. Most of the, uh, well, not most, but I would I would venture to say over half actually of the players don't play ten k events other than the main event. This right. might be their first ten k event. They might have only other. Uh, 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 10k events they've played were other main events. They don't play the 10k PLO, mm. for example. You yeah. know, they aren't playing the high roller at the Aria. They're playing this, and this is their big expenditure poker-wise of the year. And so it's a lot of stress. Yep. So at the end of the day, when you go home, you can't just immediately turn it off and fall asleep. Right. Because exactly. you, you got to burn off all that extra energy. you got to sit there and watch you know reruns of Duck Dynasty for four hours to, make, to turn your brain off. Yeah. But at that point, you're only getting five, six hours of sleep. Exactly. So having the extra day off in between day 1A and day and day 2A and day 3, and then one, once you get to day 3 and day 4, then you might be able to get into it a little bit. But uh, but especially for the players that aren't used to playing at a level this high all the time, it's really useful to have those extra days off. Yeah, I think it's hard for the amateurs to really wind down. Because, I mean, you come in here, especially you know, if it's your first or, you know, first or second time, you know, you're really wound up i mean you're so just excited to be here and then you know it's hard to to shake that off yeah you know and plus you're yeah you know, you're just it's trying tough to, for me to you're shake just trying off. And you're just trying to get through that day you right. know you're like god i i made it i made it and it's tough for sudden, me to shake off the excitement of a satellite let yeah. alone a 10k yeah absolutely yeah so, so yeah it's it's uh it, especially yeah if you guys are planning on coming next year or if you're planning on playing tomorrow or the next day you know it's it's you got to you got to balance, and, it, and it's really tough to balance, especially your first time at the World Series. Yeah, and just, just go get some hookers and blow and just go all night. Or you could do that. <laughs> I mean, that's worked for, I know some people. There's people who, that has worked, yes. <laughs> no question about that. Oh, yeah, so we're, we're going to keep an eye on everything going on out here. Real quick, there's a little bit more business being taken care of this afternoon, yes. by the way. We're not just on the main event. We've got a few tournaments going on we still have the dealer's choice right yeah my still our, going on? our good buddy rep porter who of oh, course wow. uh, of the poke the poker academy.com one of our sponsors will be leading the way uh they should be just getting underway any minute 12 players left in that and uh a pretty good field there rep porter jeff madsen uh let's see uh who see neva lil lina i should have gotten that a little easier 
That's what happens when you don't read the names right. before you start. It's easy for you to say, Mark. Yeah, thank you. It, it wouldn't be a, a, a show here at the World Series without me butchering somebody's yeah. name. Uh, David Benjamin, uh, Jans Lekemeyer, uh, Adam Freeman, Quindo, uh, Ray D. I'm not even, I'm not even trying it. Uh, Stuart Ritter, David Chu, Paul Volpe, and Jake Abdallah are still alive wow. for the 10K Dealers Choice event. They had 19 games in that thing. Yep. This was the This was the uh, Badoogie, Badesi, Badusi. Yes. Or three of the choices you mm-hmm. could make. God, that's like that's like choosing between the, you know, your mom, your sister, and, <laughs> and the ugly cousin. You know, it's just like, <laughs> I don't want any of it. Right. I'll pass. But, yeah, so Rhett Porter trying to – he's had he's had so many deep runs in this World Series this year, and he's looking to try and uh, pick up a World Series poker bracelet. It would be his third wow. if he can bring that home. As Speaking well. of lots of deep runs, look at this Paul Volpe again. Again. Again, I mean, Boy, this we were, player of the year race is going to be tight now. Yeah. Well, we were talking about how you know we have multiple people who have multiple bracelets, and we were like, "How is Paul Volpe in the lead?" And this is his eighth cash now, ninth. It's somewhere in there. Yeah, let me. Uh, I'll this pull, is a I'll pull lot of tournaments, and he's got three final tables already, hunting for a fourth, maybe more. Yeah. Let me. Uh, actually, it's funny. I did not have that ready to go for some reason. Yeah, he's having an unreal seer. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody have this many. Uh, Hey, this that's the Global Poker them. Index update, which I should just go on to WSOP.com and done it. But uh, here oh, he's your, in fourth here now. Here are your okay. rankings. Uh, right now, because, of course, Anthony Zeno pulled off a big right. win. Very popular win, and Zeno just continues yeah, Zeno. to have an unbelievable 2015. Absolutely. When I, when I was scoping him in the, uh, the, one, the, the, the one drop, the uh, one for one, 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 lots of ones drop, yeah. his opening table draw was him... Phil Ivey, Eric Seidel, and Brian Hastings Ouch. all at the same table, and he's the one that survived out of that table, Amazing, which the, is great. He's just been playing incredible poker. Uh, Mike Gordinsky is still out in front. Uh, I believe he picked up another cash. He is at uh, 21, uh, five, it's 1, 2,157.19 points. Uh, Zeno now at 1,942.72. Sean Deeb has moved into third, 1,803.99. And then Volpe, uh, who actually, you know, had, actually, you know, he's still on five caches. This is going to be a six. Oh, okay. So, wow. So, uh, but they're all ten Ks and one, and one five four ten K caches and a five K cache. Yeah. All right. So, so Volpe. I thought he had more than that. I thought he may have picked one up too, but yeah, he hadn't uh, hadn't picked one up for a while. But Volpe uh, now is, you know, it'd be a huge win if he could pull this one off, and at least, you know, probably get him into second place. I don't, I don't think he could probably. Just seeing how the points are working, I don't think he can catch up. Right. But at least put him in a, a pretty good position here. Uh, Brian Hastings is in fifth, followed by Ismail Bojang, Stephen Chidwick, Elliot Lezard, Jason Mercier, and Mark Radoja, your top ten right now. And Max Pescatori, who has won two bracelets, is in 18th place. Yeah. Oh, that's so harsh. Man, you know, it's this the, the new GPI system as opposed to last year's Bluff magazine system. Uh, they're similar, not the same. I think yeah. that any anyone who had multiple bracelets using the old system would be significantly higher top on five. the list. I would think easily top five. Yeah, yeah I, w- I would guess so. But uh, you know, you look at uh, I'm just glancing at the names. I see uh, Ben Yu, for example, yep. um, who who won a 10K event. They're they're giving a lot more weight to good finishes in the higher buy-in events. Right. I think than they did last year. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question. That's where this is geared to right now. Yeah. And that's so. and with Paul Volpe, all his caches are in ten Ks. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's you know I think I read somewhere I read on uh, I think I read it where did I read this two plus two forums or something like that where the winner of the Colossus gets the same number of Player of the Year points as a main event min cash. Wow, that's something. Yeah, you beat twenty two thousand people, and that's you not get right. or t- fourteen thousand individual people, twenty two thousand tickets. Right, and you get. The same number as someone who gets a thousandth in the main event. That's ridiculous. It's absurd. That is. Uh, so well, they're, they're going to have to do a little bit of, uh, of something to that. Well, and uh, well, I think it's interesting too because obviously it's going to be the same. For- I would think it would be the same formula that they used to do the GPI rankings. So you know now some people have got to be taking a look at the GPI rankings and saying, "Hey, what's going on here?" So yeah. Well, the GPI rankings have always given you know a ton of weight to the the super high rollers. You know, right. Scott, so like Dan Smith is always at the right. top. Scott yeah. Seifer is always yeah. floating up there because he doesn't wait. He doesn't get out of bed for anything less than five digits. Right. So you know, it's uh, it's it's tough for uh, 
for them to, to change their to change their system to the to the World Series style and sort of adapt what they believe to what the WSOP has been doing the whole time. It's it's you know, it's trying to combine two different languages, which is fine. Yeah. I like that they're giving more weight to it, but I think that this much weight and not enough much. weight to yeah. actually winning events is a little bit a uh, little bit sketchy for I, me. I agree. Well, we'll see how that works out. And of course, the one interesting part uh, I want to mention about the World Series Player of the Year race, Mike Gordinsky, who's leading right now, is not playing the main event. Is he not? He has a friend that's getting very good friend that's getting married, and he wow. Won, so the, actually, right around this weekend, so he is this week, so he is not going to be playing the main event. That's insane. That is devotion. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I Good wish I friend. had a friend like that. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, if it was me and I, my friend was in the top of the World Series Poker Player of the Year standings, I think I'd be like, hey, Mike, uh, I love you, brother. They, yeah. I, we'll <laughs> send you the video. Just get over there and win. Right. You have a, you have a shot at having your, your poster. You have your face on a 10 by 10 poster hanging on the wall for the rest of time. Yeah. You got a shot at that. You know, a good shot. He's pretty far out in front right now yeah I mean, if, he, if he has a uh you know even a, even a min cash in the main event he's gonna get probably enough points yeah and uh but now it looks like he'll be condemned to going to europe condemned rats yep, yep. off to germany with you what, Mike a, Gordon. what a horrible life <laughs> <laughs> so that should be it's gonna be an interesting race to finish this out and we'll see uh what happens here with the world series main event going on um a couple of other events uh go, finishing up today of course we have the dealer's choice uh, we also got the lucky sevens finishing up what, ah yes what did you think about that number 4400 did you um high low i mean it's kind of hard to gauge it since it's the tough first for me time, to gauge i think that that's a low number and but the reason why i think it's a low number is because all the folks that were in for the colossus uh, are gone by this point. Yeah. If if they're if they're here for the Colossus, they're not here for to play in the main event. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're here on vacation. They're here for maybe a week, maybe a week and a half. You know, see the sights, play in a tournament or two. Um, you know that the the forty four hundred is a number that's similar to the daily event that happened the day after day one Good of the point. Colossus. Good point. Yeah. You know, and that was a, a, a another five hundred dollar event, I think. Um, and so, you know, 777 is a low number for buy-ins, but by this point in the series, you've got people playing in the 10K uh, uh, main event, the 10K dealer's choice. You've got another 10K. I forget which one happened two days ago, but there was one that happened two days ago. Um, you know, yeah, all the, the PLO, champions. Yeah. yeah, PLO. you got the super high roller in town. Like the, po the folks that are interested in playing in the Lucky 7s, might not still be in town. Right. And so I think that that's just a scheduling thing, that if this was event... 20 instead of event 67 or whatever it was when the Colossus is event one might have had a higher number might not have who knows yeah um but I think that it's it's a, it, I was a little surprised by how low that number was yeah I was I was a little shocked too because I was here you know both the you know for that day and I was just kind of a little surprised to see it was a little dead in the hallways yeah. I, I mean I don't and I don't know it just seems like maybe this year has just been a the dead hallway year but uh, I don't know that number was a I don't know. I I expected more than that, but it's still you know it's still a pretty good number. Well, the other so. thing about day one, or I think it was day one of the Lucky Sevens, coincided with the online bracelet event, right. which you didn't have to be in the building for. Right. So there was day one of a bracelet event that you didn't have to be here for, and so you're going to have more empty hallways. Yeah, there was. Based I, on that. I did not come over that Thursday, and yeah. I'm glad I did because there was nobody here. Yep. I, what did you think about those numbers? It was about 900 players for that. That's about right. Um, I expect. Uh, you know, when you when you introduce an event that's so so Joe, sorry about that. It's oh, so unique, um, at just as unique as as the. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a good example. Like if you introduced, uh, like but let's say they introduced the Badugi bracelet next year, I wouldn't mm -hmm. expect a million people to enter it. Yeah. When you when you have something that's or the DraftKings is another one that had the 50 50 payout structure. That's a really weird event that players can't necessarily grasp easily. Right. Um, and so and then and but you have the bracelet, uh, the online bracelet event, and I think that. The, the, the combination of it being new and new things being frightening, particularly for poker players, yeah, like exactly, you know, it's been the same deck <laughs> since the 1500s. They they aren't super interested in change. Yeah, um, it's 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 a little. I I think it's a little low, but um, you know, once once online poker starts picking up more, we expect California to be picking up online poker at some point in the near future. Yeah, about you know. 2020 sounds. Yeah, about right. so I think that as as it develops and as we have more online bracelet uh, events. 
Um, we're we're gonna we're definitely gonna crack the 1K. I would expect maybe 1500 next year. 900 is about right for this year. I think that most people just didn't have accounts or didn't play that much. Yeah. Um, you know, because if you're interested in playing in, bra in online events, you're more interested in bracelets or vice versa. You might not. You know, the, the crossover audience isn't exactly a hundred percent for for that. So. It's a little low, yeah. but uh, you know, just like just like with the Lucky Sevens, they're going to finagle and try and move things around to make it make more sense. Yeah. So yeah, it's a decent. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. This decent is, this turnout. Been, yeah, it's just been it's been a, just an odd year in terms of attendance in a lot of events. It has. Uh, look, but anyway, uh, for the players left, that is underway now. They are down to fifty-eight players. Rocco Palumbo, out in front, one million one hundred thirty-seven thousand, followed by Robert Toy, one million one hundred thirty-three thousand. Bow win. John Gallagher, we'll just go with that. Matt Matros, uh-oh. That's scary if Matros has yeah. chips. I wouldn't want to be messing with Matt there. Uh, Sarkis Paranyan at 690. Kevin Davis at 668. Faraz Jaka up there at 659. David Yu at 645. And Jeffrey Dorbin at 596, your top 10 in that one. Uh, Joe Cuther still hanging around in there. Adam Geyer uh, is in this thing. Uh, let's run and down through, see who else is uh, bracelet hunting here. Caitlin Hall, uh, Brett Schaefer, Darren Rabinowitz, good friend of mine from Florida. Very yeah. good, very Not good Not recognizing player. a ton of the names left on this list, but I think that yeah. that's just a function of it being a smaller buy-in. It's, it's the one small fish in the in the big ocean of events this week. You know, And it was a good time for everybody to take a break, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. You know, to say the least. Uh, who else is there? I know I just saw Kevin McPhee looking for another bracelet in this one. Uh, so he's still alive. So now yeah, that's uh, those are all your pretty much all your notables uh, left in the lucky sevens, and then we do have the fifteen hundred dollars seven card stud high low eight or better. Uh, Gerald Ring, uh, they actually had three left. Daniel Adima was back trying to win another bracelet, but he is out. Uh, Gerald Ring leading Christopher Bitch for that bracelet. So three more bracelets. Uh, well, one, well, at least uh, probably give out two more today, I would think. The Lucky yeah. Sevens will probably go one more day, unless they really are feeling a little frisky. Right, right. But So two more bracelets today, one more tomorrow, and then we just focus on this crazy little shite focus show known as the main event. event. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly it should be, right. should be a great, great afternoon here at the World Series. Uh, let's step back, take a break, and we're going to come right back with more. It's the fourth anniversary of the Mark Oak Show. God, I feel like... Uh, I feel like the shine's off, though. You know? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Everybody's everybody's still digging the show, and we do appreciate yeah. it. All right, stick around, everybody. We'll be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show, live from the World Series of Poker. Stick around. I'm here with two-time WSOP bracelet winner, Rep Porter. Rep, you just launched a new poker training site, thepokeracademy.com. What's one tip you can give to players up, that Chad? will immediately improve their game? I would say that if you're not currently using your chips not as right. weapons well, to win other chips, right. you need to start doing that. One great way to do that is to raise more frequently pre-flop when it's folded to you in the cutoff or on the button. You should be opening with 40 to 70% of your hands depending on the tournament situation. You'll find that you win the blinds and andies pre-flop at a very high rate. And even if one of your opponents calls you, you'll still have chances to win the spot. Sometimes you'll make a hand and other times you'll be able to win the spot with a simple continuation bet. That's a great tip for you from Rep Porter at thepokeracademy.com. It's a completely Thanks. different kind of training site. Thepokeracademy.com offers a no-limit tournament course that gives you a comprehensive strategy from the beginning through all the stages of tournament play. Use the link thepokeracademy.com slash mark to get a free 166-page course guide when you buy the course. That's thepokeracademy.com slash mark. The PPC Poker Tour is back in action in July with two can't-miss tour stops. Join us at the Silks Poker Room at Tampa Bay Downs for the PPC Tampa Downs Summer Series, July 8th through 12th, with a $50,000 guaranteed main event, and then head down to Naples, Fort Myers, Greyhound Track for the Naples Fort Myers Gold Coast Open, July 21st through the 26th with a $30,000 guaranteed main event. It's your chance to win your way to Aruba for an unforgettable trip to poker paradise at the PPC Aruba Championships. Check out all the information at ppcpokertour.com and join the fireworks on the PPC Poker Tour in July. 
PokerShop.com is your one-stop shop for all your poker and game room needs. PokerShop.com has you covered with an incredible variety of poker chips and supplies, top quality playing cards, plus gaming tables and room accessories, just like you'd find in your favorite casino. And if you're looking to spruce up your man cave, we offer a wide selection of decor options, from lighting to mirrors, and portable bars to bub stools, to make your game room the one all your friends and family will be talking about. So for everything you need to make your game night a great night, go to www.pokershop.com and receive 10% off your purchase with the code HOKE. H-O-K-E. You supply your friends. We supply everything else. Live it. Love it. Pokershop.com. There's nothing better than sitting down to play poker with good friends and cutting loose. And that's what you're going to find when you tune in to Poker Night in America. Poker Night in America is revolutionizing televised poker in a big way. With all the action you love and the hilarious fun you've been missing, come take a seat at the table with all your favorite players. Old and new with Poker Night in America. Mondays, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on CBS Sports Network. And don't forget to visit the show online at Poker PokerNight.com. So pull up a chair and join us Mondays on Poker Night in America. Not a single one, unfortunately. Only a donkey would call my pre-flop bet with a deuce tray. Hey, deuce tray is my lucky hand. And besides, they were suited. Man, I played that hand great. <laughs> that was a real share my pair hand. Share my pair. The best way to share your poker stories with friends right. for free. Available from the iTunes App Store and Google Play. Download the app now. Heads up, everyone. It's time for the ABC Chinese Poker App Tip of the Day. Always double check for fives and tens before you set your hand. A five or a ten is needed to complete every possible straight, so make sure you aren't shutting yourself out by misplacing those key cards at the start of the hand. Leaving the door open to as many hand possibilities as you can will lead to big points and lots of winning sessions. Want to get in on the Chinese poker action with over one million games played every week? Download the ABC Chinese Poker Poker app on your iPhone or iPad today from Vegas to Miami and all over the world. It's the number one Chinese poker app, ABC Chinese Poker. The poker action never stops at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Be a part of our third annual Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open, offering a $5 million guaranteed championship August 15th through 18th. That's over 5 million reasons to get in the game. Play in any of the additional events running at the premier poker destination July 30th through August 19th, plus satellites and promotions all summer long. The Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open Championship event features one of the best structures anywhere and will be televised and live stream of four final tables, guaranteeing a 7.5 million in combined prize pools. Visit SHRPO.com or the Poker Room for registration and how to win your entry into the championship. Only at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino Hollywood. Must be 21 to play slots and table games and at least 18 to play live poker. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call one 888 Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. And we are back, and that is not Ruben Bressler. Definitely not. No. I don't know who's more handsome, though. You were, you were Ruben. You're both pretty uh, good-looking guys. It's me, without a doubt. Wow, Chad Holloway just, I teed him up, and he hit it out of the park. You know, that's what I do. Good I'm, man. I'm excited to be here today, because... Big day here at the World Series of Poker. It's a big day for, for you. Yeah. Four year anniversary. It's pretty sick. It is. It's, it's a long time. It's uh, it's kind of sad and demented too at the same time. <laughs> I'm I must be a glutton for punishment. But yeah, welcome back to the show. We do appreciate it. Chad Holloway from Poker News and the World Series of Zombies it's on the in the house. 
Man, that is a great shirt, too. So, Chad, uh, uh, real quick before we get into the pokery type stuff, what's up with the comic book? You know, tell everybody a little bit about that. We'll get yeah, some time. The, uh, the World Series of Zombies was my little passion project this summer. Been selling it here in the hallways of the Rio all summer long. Just five bucks, a great little souvenir. Basically, it's about a zombie outbreak at the World Series of Poker. Just something fun, different, unique, and, uh, you know, reception's been great. A lot of pros have stopped by, picked up a copy, said they love it. So, really happy with how it's turned out. There's a traitorous, traitorous twist in there. I'm not going to say what happened. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's... But it's not shocking. <laughs> I mean, it's shocking, but it's not shocking. You know what I mean? You got, you got to give the people what they want. Yeah. <laughs> then that you did. Well, Chad, uh, first let's talk a little bit about today, of course, the main event kicking off. Uh, what are your thoughts about what what's going on so far? Does it seem to you like we're a little bit down today? No, uh, you know, I, I actually haven't been at the Rio for the last week, so it's kind of... You know, hard for me to come back here and not feel excited because uh, I was working another event across town. Uh, so, yeah, today it feels good to me, I guess. Um, you know, the hallways seem to be a little more buzzing than they have in recent weeks. I mean, it's the main event time. Everybody's excited. Uh, attendance wise, yeah, maybe down, but usually day 1A is kind of the slump. We'll right. pick up tomorrow and then even bigger and better on day 1C. Personally, I'm going to be playing on day 1C. So, oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to that. You got out of work, huh? I did, yeah. I had to pull some strings, but uh, yeah, I'm going to play the main event for the second time. Uh, last time was two years ago in 2013. Of course, couldn't play it last year working for Caesars, uh, but this year got the green light. Wow. Yeah, it should be fun. Boy, you have some nice benevolent dictators over there at Poker News, <laughs> huh? You know, it's an easygoing year. We're not like uh, doing the live reporting this year, so we got our schedules a little more freed up. And uh, yeah, I said I wanted to play this one. They said, all right. I know from a company standpoint, obviously there's a lot of money involved for covering the World Series, but just on a on a personal level, do you guys miss it? I mean, do you miss doing it? I mean, given the given I, that you got all the free time to relax and enjoy yourselves a little bit, definitely some more than others. You know, I think some people kind of got addicted to the live reporting, the, the 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 rush and the the busy schedule of it all, and I think the others have taken to it a little bit more relaxed. Like, wow, you know, I don't have to work 14 hours a day for six days straight or, or what have you. So. You know, it's a kind of hit or miss. I, personally, myself, I love it because it allows me to sell the comic this summer. Uh, you know, if it wasn't that case, I wouldn't have been able to sell like I have. So it's really worked out for me, uh, both selling the comic and you know, work-wise. Gotta and, be, of course, playing the main event. Got to be tired, though, dude. I mean, aren't we all? Aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a long grind, the seven weeks of the World Series of Poker. I know that... Uh, a lot of people come for a weekend or a week or a couple times throughout the summer, but for people like you and I who are here every single day for seven weeks straight, it's, uh, oh, man, I just want to sleep for a whole week. I just want to take a chainsaw to the place. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't want to tear the Allen apart. chainsaw. Yeah, That's there you go. So what are, what's been your favorite stories at the World Series this year so far? I mean, so many great players have won bracelets this year. Uh, you know, of course, had a, another woman win an open event. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. What uh, what's standing out to you? Yeah, it's been actually a really good summer as far as storylines and that goes. Um, a couple of them that jumped to mind, obviously, Phil Hellmuth winning his 14th bracelet uh, fairly early on was exciting. Uh, anytime he makes a run, it gets this whole buzz going. Mm -hmm. So when he can actually close it out like he did, uh, that's extra special. I think the... Uh, one drop high roller was a great event between Bill Klein donating, you know, 2.5 million mm -hmm. uh, for his runner-up finish, and then Jonathan Duhamel, uh, main event champ, uh, a guy closely associated with the one drop for many years, taking down the title. You know, that was uh, another cool thing. And then we've also seen a lot of guys who broke through and finally won their first bracelets. You know, Sean Deeb uh, is one that you know just played for many years and finally got it. And there's been you know, half a dozen other guys that fit that criteria too. So it's just been a uh, kind of cool to see a lot of guys get their due this year. Anthony Zeno, a, a big story and a very popular win for him, getting his bracelet too. I mean that, you know, that just uh, I mean this this year's only half, you know, a little over half over, and he's having one of the most dominant years we've seen in a while. Yeah, between uh, the WVT Player of the Year winning two titles on that tour, and then uh, you know coming here winning a bracelet in the 25k PLO High Roller. Just really impressive, and it goes to show you that you know hard work does pay off because he's been playing for the better part of eight years, and uh, you know things just came together for him. It's it's kind of inspirational. Yeah, and, and and it's he's a nice guy too. Right. I mean that that's one of the best parts about it. You like to see the good guys win, 
And anybody who's willing to dress up in a suit when he makes a final table, he's all right in my book. There you go. Yeah, he's going to the Mike Sexton route for sure. Uh, what else has stood out to you at this World Series? I mean, there's been obviously a lot of changes with uh, the live reporting and you know some of the some of the hiccups and the structures and and so on. Uh, what uh, what have you seen so far this year away from the felt that has kind of surprised you a little bit? You know, there's a lot of things that uh, players are upset about from the you know playing cards and the way that was handled and and things like that. You know, there was a debacle with the Colossus payouts and you know, so a lot of people have gotten upset and the, the WSOP has tried to to adapt as they can. Sometimes they've had more success than others. Um, so I guess that's just one thing that I've noticed is that there are some pros who have been fairly vocal about the things that they're upset with. You know, they're saying we're, we're customers of the WSOP. We're upset with how it's going uh, in these certain regards and they want to see changes. And, uh, you know, I think from a business standpoint, the WSOP definitely has to, you know, have an open ear to that and try to listen to what the players want. You know, because players' feedback is, is very important. Well, I think one thing that's important for the World Series, too, and, and a lot of players have been, you know, talking to me and saying, you know, either we're not coming or we're playing other stuff. You know, it's just better values. You know, we're getting better customer service and so on. You know, the, it's become, it used to be a few years ago that people wouldn't schedule stuff against the World Series, like just put your hands up and we'll take the cash games. But that's not the case now. And there have been a ton of events going on. And, you know, it just gets more and more and more every time. And there's just too many tempting options sometimes for players to, you know, just go somewhere else and skip these events. Yeah, it's, uh, they're not the only game in town, you know, a a any longer. You got the WPT 500 at the Aria, which was a huge hit. The uh, whole high, uh, super high roller series between the cash game, the 500K buy-in, um, and the celebrity, you know, shootout. It was, you know, people were excited about that. It mm -hmm. took the attention away from the World Series of Poker for the better part of a week. You know, you had big name pros skipping tournaments at the World Series in favor of, of these other ones across town. And, uh, you know, a lot had to do with how they were treated, um, the, the deals they were kind of getting as far as, you know, the, it wasn't raked for that uh, super high roller 500K. And they just felt that they were getting treated right. So that's, that's where they're going to go. And, you know, if other people come to town and can offer, you know, similar things, you might see people give up playing the WSOP here and there to, to play in another event, you know. And uh, competition is a good thing, I think. Yeah. When it comes, you know, when it's for, for poker players anyways. Uh, the, the one thing, of course, the WSOP has and always will have is the prestige. You know, it's all about bracelets. People want to win a bracelet. That's it. It's a huge, uh, huge pull. And there's always going to be people. But if you really want to maximize everything, you just got to, you know, offer good customer service, offer a, a good playing experience, and, uh, you know, just, just listen to the players. Yeah, I, you know, I think there's a lot of little adjustments that are definitely going to be made after this World Series for sure because they were just, like I said, it was just, there were just too many small complaints and a few big ones that just really seem to bog things down around here this year. So, you know, maybe they'll take a hard look at it and you know, not be so monolithic and right. say, you know, and hey, it's time we got to, okay, we got to kind of get on board with this. Rich Muni's here, by the way, from the Poker Players Alliance. So is Denise. Yay. Oh, see, I just catch that, grab it, and. Give me a smile. Uh, so, Chad, uh, you got the main event coming up. Uh, you know, what's your summer been like? I mean, you, you've had a, a lot going on, too. Uh, you know, been having fun? I mean, that's that's the big question. Are you having I a mean, good time? I tried. I, I um, scheduled some playing time on my days off. I ended up playing uh, four bracelet events before the main event, and I played for a grand total of maybe nine hours, <laughs> and Jeez. one of them was a limit event. Um, so, yeah, oh, so it hasn't been good playing-wise. I won't bore you with the details, but... Just uh, hasn't been going my way. Hopefully that changes in uh, the main event. You know, if there's one to run deep in, that's, that's definitely the one I want to do it in. So. Yeah, well, we'd love to see that. You know that. But look at all these guys. See, now all these other media guys are showing up here Right. Know, yeah. last we, night. Frank Opdeward, he's uh, PokerNews.nl, flew in today. He's going to be working the main event. It's another part that's so exciting about this is, you know, a lot of people only come for the main event, be it media or players or just fans of the game. They come, they, this is the time they want to be here. So that definitely adds to the excitement and the buzz about the real. Yep. So we're, uh, like I said, we're just getting underway here. Day 1A of the main event uh, kicked off this morning and, uh, you know, 1B, 1C coming up. Uh, do you think numbers are going to be up or down? You know, I did a prediction piece even before the series started. I think the main event number will be down but not in, you know, in a huge way. Uh, I think it will be maybe plus or minus 100 either way. So I could see it going up. I could see it going down, but either direction, I don't think it's going to be 
a huge difference. You know, I think it's going to be very much on par with last year. Um, and I guess the only reason I really feel it that way is because I don't feel like there's been anything to add to getting more people there. You know, I don't think the paying out a thousand spots is really going to attract that many more players. But there's nothing been, you know, happening that's really detracted from it either. Right. So I think it's just going to be about the same, which I think in the current poker landscape, you know, all things considered, that's a good thing for poker. You know? Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting that when they, you know, when they had announced they were going to do the 10 mil on top, guarantee on top again, and then changed it due to a lot of players, you know, complaining at them about it and then made it a thousand. You know, if it doesn't work out, you know, I mean, are they, are, do, you, do you feel like the WSOP is maybe adjusting too much too quickly and not take, you know, and maybe overreacting sometimes to when there's a player explosion about something and not taking their time and saying, okay, you know, wait, let's slow down. Let's think about this. If we made a decision, let's stay with it. And if it doesn't work, then we maybe come back next year and correct it instead of doing it on the fly. Like, it seems like they've been doing a lot. You know, I, I give the WSOP credit for trying out new things, um, be it the $10 million guaranteed for first place last year, paying the 1,000 spots this year in the main event, and then all the other events they tried this year, you know, the Colossus, the 777, just a lot of these things that they're willing to try. And I like that. I think poker is in need of things like that, the new innovation. And, uh, you know, I kind of applaud them as far as they try it. If it works, then they stick with it. If it doesn't work, then they, you know, change and adapt. Um, you know, I, I think it's a thin line. You know, if something's a success, uh, for instance, the Colossus, you know, if they hold the Colossus next year or try to make it a yearly thing, I don't think it's going to quite perform as well as the first one did. You know, right. there's such an excitement about that first one. Um, so, you know, I've always been a... a proponent of not slaying the golden goose you know mm -hmm. when you've got something good going just let it run its course so uh you know the colossus maybe it will work every year maybe in every other year type things you know the better option i don't know but what we do know is that the colossus was a success people were excited about it and the numbers were, were hit so you know kudos to them on that and uh you know try out the paint a thousand spots in the main event this year if uh players like it awesome do it again next year if they don't who knows try something different yeah so we'll see i mean you know, next two days we're going to know what those main event numbers are going to be so it should be pretty cool chad did you did you need to get rolling or are you okay or? i do need to go in a, in okay. a, a minute or two if you want to quick get something else in here we can oh well, i just i just didn't want to you know impose on your time i mean you are <laughs> oh, chad it's not that. it's just uh, like, as we mentioned i got the comic book going so i got a little booth here that's unmanned and <sighs> you can't make those uh, sales you can't make those donuts if you're not uh, at the deep fryer that is very correct sir yeah. yeah we all know about that uh so now if everybody wants to check out what you guys are doing on poker news tell a little bit about what coverage you are you guys are doing this year and you know what what they can see on the site right well while we're not doing live updates we do have a ton of content from the series between videos articles daily recaps interviews all that stuff i mean we got a good team here pounding away uh bringing all the great stories so you can go to pokernews.com view several things every single day uh, between now and right up to the establishment of the november 9 which, which i hope, hope to be a part of what's your best piece that you wrote this year chad if you had to pick one out this year oh man i've written written a lot one that really sticks out in my mind though that i'll remember for a while was after helmuth won his 14th bracelet he invited me to his celebration at the aria afterwards it was three or four in the morning and uh, i kind of tagged along and played a fly on the wall and then wrote about that experience mm -hmm. and uh you know just kind of giving readers a, a look behind the scenes of what does the you know all-time bracelet winner do to celebrate and so that was very special to take part in that and uh, be invited so uh, that's definitely up there all right so make sure you guys check it out at poker news you can follow him on his pretentious twitter handle at chad a holloway the a is for alan I, my middle initial I, I i followed the same suit with him by the way <laughs> Yeah, mine's Alan too, spelled the proper way. But you know, I mean, we're kind of sinking up on that. I blame my parents on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Well, Chad, best of luck in the main event. Thank you. You sir. know, everybody's going to be rooting for you. Guys, go buy some comic books. They're it's a great book. You're going to love it. You know, and, and I know a lot of pros will be willing to sign it for you if you bring it up because you know they love Chad so much. And well, thank you, thing, and so. uh, congrats to you on four years. It's been exciting. I've been there for a long time. Pretty uh, much for just about yeah, the start. I've so been a, a regular guest, so I'm looking forward to many more years to come. Thank you, brother. Appreciate right, it. Thanks. Appreciate you stopping by. Chad Holloway, everybody, of Poker News. Go get a comic book. Zombie, zombie, zombie. Now, now, now. Look, look, see zombie.
Zombies. We'll even put the cover up right. See, buy the zombie book. There it is. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Chad Holloway, everybody. All right, guys, uh, let's take a break, and we come back. We'll take a look at uh, a few other bracelet winners that we've had and uh, what's, what else is happening here at the main event before we wrap up our fourth anniversary show. I want to thank uh, Ruben Wrestler for stopping in and Chad Holloway. Uh, Kevin Mathis was over. We were in commercial. Got to say hi to him real quick. And uh, Liz Tedder stopping over, too, which we do appreciate. So, um, yeah, but everybody's out here having a good time. Stick around. We'll be right back here on the Mark Oak Show, live from the World Series of Poker main event. I'm here with two-time WSOP bracelet winner, Rep Porter. Rep, you just launched a new poker training site, thepokeracademy.com. What's one tip you can give to players that will immediately improve their game? One mistake I see a lot of newer tournament players make is they vary their bet size depending on their hand strength. Some players, when they have a big hand, bet big, and when they have a small hand, bet small. Other players bet smaller when they want you to call them and bet bigger when they want you to fold. These type of betting pattern tells are very easy to pick up on if you're sitting at the table with the same player for a long time. It's really important in tournament play to keep your bet sizing consistent so that your opponents aren't able to discern what kind of hand you have by the amount that you're betting. That's a great tip for you from Rep Porter at ThePokerAcademy.com. It's a completely different kind of training site. ThePokerAcademy.com offers a no-limit tournament course that gives you a comprehensive strategy from the beginning through all the stages of tournament play. Use the link ThePokerAcademy.com slash mark to get a free 166-page course guide when you buy the course. That's ThePokerAcademy.com slash mark. There's nothing better than sitting down to play poker with good friends and cutting loose. And that's what you're going to find when you tune in to Poker Night in America. Poker Night in America is revolutionizing televised poker in a big way. With all the action you love and the hilarious fun you've been missing, come take a seat at the table with all your favorite players. Old and new with Poker Night in America. Mondays, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on CBS Sports Network. And don't forget to visit the show online at Poker Night night.com so pull up a chair and join us mondays on poker night in america only a donkey would call my pre-flop bet with a deuce tray hey deuce tray is my lucky hand and besides they were suited man i played that hand great <laughs> that was a real share my pair hand share my pair the best way to share your poker stories with friends for free available from the itunes app store and google play download the app now pokershop.com is your one-stop shop for all your poker and game room needs pokershop.com has you covered with an incredible variety of poker chips and supplies top quality playing cards plus gaming tables and room accessories just like you'd find in your favorite casino and if you're looking to spruce up your man cave we offer a wide selection of decor options from lighting to mirrors and portable bars to bub stools to make your game room the one all your friends and family will be talking about so for everything you need to make your your game night a great night go to www.pokershop.com and receive 10 percent off your purchase with the code hoke h-o-k-e you supply your friends we supply everything else live it love it pokershop.com hi everyone mark here if you're a poker player like me and looking for something different and exciting to play you should give open face chinese poker a shot it has just the right mix of skill, luck, plus a huge dose of the fun factor we're all looking for. There's a reason Open Face Chinese Poker has everyone from the recreational player to the top pros hooked on its thrills, action, and unique social interactions you won't find in Hold'em. An incredible game like this has got to be worth checking out. And it's easy to learn, especially by using the ABC Chinese Poker app. Download the ABC Chinese Poker app on iTunes today and find out what everyone's talking about. And if you have questions about the game, tweet at ABC Chinese Poker and they'll be glad to help you along. So join the open face Chinese Poker community today with the ABC Chinese Poker app and we'll see you at the tables. 
Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. .net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? The PPC Poker Tour is back in action in July with two can't-miss tour stops. Join us at the Silks Poker Room at Tampa Bay Downs for the PPC Tampa Down Summer Series, July 8th through 12th, with a $50,000 guaranteed main event, and then head down to Naples, Fort Myers, Greyhound Track for the Naples Fort Myers Gold Coast Open, July 21st through the 26th, with a $30,000 guaranteed main event. It's your chance to win your way to Aruba for an unforgettable trip to poker paradise at the PPC Aruba Championships. Check out all the information at ppcpokertour.com and join the fireworks on the PPC Poker Tour in July. Want more of the Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. All right, and we're back for one more round here. The fourth anniversary of The Mark Hoke Show. Thank you all for being with us today. We appreciate it. As you're catching us on YouTube, or you we get to listen to our podcast on markhokeshow.podbean.com. KSHP, whatever. It's all good. We got you covered, man. We got extra chairs over there too. <laughs> but wow, what a, you know, it's hard to believe we reached the main event of another World Series of Poker. It has been a uh, a heck of a grind this year for everybody, to say the least. And uh, you know, but uh, we, the end is in sight as we have kicked off today's main event. As someone is on their way to winning a World Championship, possibly coming out of this group today. Could it be uh, you know the guy sitting uh, with the Goofy little hat, the uh, floppy hat, uh, just a little ways away from me in the hallway. York Van Hoof, could he get back to the final table? Can Mark Newhouse do it again? Uh, will one of the legends of poker step in and win or win one or another world championship? Will it be an amateur, just a no, someone out of nowhere, bring home the title? We'll find out as uh, we will be wearing on here at this uh, main event. Of course, uh, day one A. Underway. By the way, we do want to congratulate Brian Rast uh, winning the high roller, uh, super high roller over there at the Aria. Congratulations to him. A seven plus million dollar score. That's going to make your World Series for sure. So congratulations to Brian Rast bringing that one home. Uh, also tonight, if you are around, we would love to, uh, you know, you guys want to, well, actually, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to be there. But uh, if you want to get over to the charity series of poker event, Matt Stout, and his team putting that on. Uh, we've been defending Three Square, which is Las Vegas' only food bank. Has a plan at Hollywood, Las Vegas Resort and Casino, $330 buy-in, $100 rebuys and add-ons, uh, plus a 50-50 rake-free charity cash game. So it should be a lot of fun over there. And uh, you know, I've finished second in one of those events, and uh, guarantee you're going to have a blast. So hop on board there uh, with the Charity Series of Poker. You go to charityseriesofpoker.com if you want to get more information. But once again, it's at 7 o'clock tonight, so head on over there to Planet Hollywood and support a great cause. Sure, it would be greatly appreciated. All right, and while we do have a second, I uh, believe we're going to have, uh, let's check the uh, check the Mark Hoke Show hotline. Um, yep, uh, should be coming over. Uh, Al Can Hang should be joining us. So, yeah, it's a media festival over here. Ruben Bressler, Chad Holloway, and uh, our good buddy, 
Alcan Hang joining us on the show. But of course, one thing that we cannot do is we don't have these great sponsors. We don't have a show, and uh, we want to thank all of them for their support of the show. We'll swing the graphic over there. There we go. Um, but of course, uh, we are the Mark Hoke Show. Four years and going strong, baby. Got to love it. Having a great time uh, bringing you the best in poker news and entertainment from around the world. And, of course, by the way, thanks to the Poker Stars team for having us over there. Had a good time over at their suite the last couple of days. Uh, Rep Porter, of course, uh, now, by the way, in second, but barely, in uh, his quest to win a bracelet today. Of course, he is part of the PokerAcademy.com. Learn how to actually get through a whole tournament, not just bits and pieces. Check it out today at thepokeracademy.com. And if you go backslash mark, you're going to get a free course guide. 166 pages for free. Go to thepokeracademy.com. ABC Chinese Poker. It is the number one ABC Chinese Poker app. Million games every week. And there's a reason why when you download the ABC Chinese Poker app for your iPad or iPhone today, you're going to love it. I promise it. It's my go-to app on my phone You'll love it, ABC Chinese Poker. BlueRail.net, Bob Lusk, and the team, of course, doing a great job running uh, MarkHokeShow.com, among many other websites. And if you want to get on with the best, the best in web design, check them out today at BlueRail.net. You're going to be glad you did. They build websites. How far do you want to go? Uh, we have our good friends at the PPC Poker Tour. Oh, baby, we're going to be, uh, we've got one kicking off here on the 8th, only a couple of days away, down at Tampa Bay Downs. I'm going to miss, I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be sending Damon Schulenberger down there to cover the event. but uh, So I'm going to be missing you guys in Tampa, but I'll catch you the next time around. Uh, but, of course, also we're going to be at Fort Myers uh, January, or, uh, excuse me, July 22nd through the 26th. So join us there as well and check it out at ppcpokertour.com. Pokershop.com, we got 10% off all your poker supplies going on today at and every day with pokershop.com. Tables, chips, chairs, cards, whatever you need. Hey, the World Series could have bought some cards there. That wouldn't have been a bad idea. Check it out today at PokerShop.com. The Nevada Poker League free poker here in Las Vegas. Man, when you bust out the main event, uh, you blew your 10000 you got nothing to do. Well, go over and play one of the 20 locations with the Nevada Poker League. Cash and prizes, all for free. You're going to have an awesome time there at one, wherever you decide to go play. Check it out today at NevadaPokerLeague.com. Share my pair, that terrific app. Why tell the story a million times? Tell it once. Play a post and share it with Share My Pair, available for all your smartphones today. And it's one of the best apps to tell a story of what happened in one of those crazy hands, good or bad. Let's check it out today at Share My Pair. And, of course, still going to add ShareMyPair.com. Uh, of course, we will also be down at the Seminole Hard Rock, the Seminole Hard Rock Poker Open, coming up here uh, July 30th through August 19th. Four live stream tables, $5 million guaranteed main event. It's a freeze out, too. It's going to be something else. So we would love to see you down there for all the events at the Seminole Hard Rock at shrpo.com for all the information. Of course, the Grindettes, Katie Stone, Kitty Dozier, Jen Shahani, and Jamie Kerstetter. The lovely Grindettes been supporters of the show for a long time. Of course, do a segment on our show on KSHP. Check them out at Grindettes on Twitter, the Grindettes on Facebook grindettes.com today and of course our good friends at poker night in america todd anderson chris anson and the team bringing the best in poker television Wednesday, uh, monday nights at 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific on cbs sports network all your favorite players all the goofy goings on you're going to see me playing chess on that show if you can believe it Let's check it out today at poker night in america and of course you can catch us on wednesdays on kshp 1400 a.m here in las vegas and kshp.com around the world listen to us anytime we also got our podcasts on itunes and mark hoke show dot follow us on twitter at mark hoke show facebook the mark hoke show and mark hoke show dot com for all our live shows coming at you from the world series we're on show 381 today i'm sorry 381 am i seeing 300 681 my god that's uh, that's how wiped out i am guys 681 shows and still going strong. We probably will not get to the 700 mark by the main event. Looks like we'll be celebrating that one down at Seminole Hard Rock, but that's okay. I like celebrating at Seminole Hard Rock. So make sure you join us for that. It's going to be a great time. Um, and, of course, couldn't have done it without all of your support. Uh, we certainly do appreciate it. All right, uh, so hopefully we're going to get Al down here in a couple of minutes. And when we do, 
or until we do, let's take a look at some of the events that have taken place. Of course, we had a few days off here on the show due to some Poker Stars stuff and the holiday. Uh, event 60, of course, Anthony Zeno finally winning that World Series of Poker bracelet, continuing to have that incredible year. And as he knocks off Pakanai Lisawad to win the $25,000 High Roller Pot Limit Omaha Tournament, putting that bracelet in his pocket, now moves into second place in the Player of the Year standings uh, for the World Series. Uh, Steon Usturud finishing third, Christian Harder in fourth, Yuha Helpy in fifth, Ismail Bojang continues his great World Series play. And I'll tell you, that is a consistent name here. He's been incredible. Uh, he finishes sixth, Alexander uh, Kostrichson finishing in seventh, Sean Deeb another final table, he ends up in eighth, Christopher Santora in ninth place in the $2,500 high roller pot limit Omaha tournament. Paul Hoffer from Leipzig, Germany, brings home a German bracelet. He wins the one, the little one for one drop, $1,111 buy-in, beats Mario Lopez from Argentina. Argentina almost getting the second bracelet. Not sure if they've ever done that. Uh, but uh, Lopez comes up short to Hoffer, followed by Senovio Ramirez the third out of Mission, Texas. John Redding finishing in fourth, Carlos Chang in fifth, Dustin Lee in sixth. Uh, Rainer Kempe from Germany in seventh. Jason Calk in eighth, Brett Schaefer in ninth, and Big Hooney was very disappointed. Uh, came in the chip leader but couldn't, uh, just had a couple of bad runs early in the final table and finishes in tenth place, but still a great run for Big Hooney in the little one for one drop. Uh, let's see, we go to event number 62. Jack Duong wins that one as uh, he brings a bracelet back to South Plainfield, New Jersey uh, as he beats Vietslav Pesta from the Czech Republic to win event number 62, the $1,500 Bounty No Limit Hold'em Tournament. Adam Johnson in third, Scott Sider in fourth, Paul Warren in fifth, Ronald Sullivan in sixth, Wojciech Ruzika from the Czech Republic in seventh, John Young in eighth, Peter Murphy, and Peter Murphy in ninth, and Jose De La Guardia finishes in tenth place in event number 62, the $1,500 Bounty no limit hold'em tournament. I love the WSP. I don't even know who they're following. The uh, the WSP camera crew now, or ESPN camera crew, doing their thing out there. Uh, event number sixty three, the ten thousand dollar horse championship goes to Andrew Barber. Barber out of Sacramento, California, takes down that title, and he knocks off Vyacheslav Zukov. Oh, and Zukov nearly getting a bracelet finally, uh, but uh, Barber denies him. Uh, Don Zuin in third. Jared Blesnick. Finishes in fourth and Joe Hashem. That's what happens when you come on the Mark Oak Show. And by the way, that podcast will be up. Unfortunately, the, it somehow got deleted from our server. So as soon as we get that uh, get that recording back, we'll have that up for you. But Hashem finishing fourth. Frank Casella, who, by the way, great host again at his uh, Fourth of July party. Uh, thank you so much, Frank. And I think a lot of people in the book community, thank you for putting that on. Certainly do appreciate it. But Casella finishes in sixth. Scotty Wynn in the seventh. Daniel Aspina in eighth. Arash Ganyan in ninth, and Elia Lezra finishes in 10th, and some other big names up there too. Philip Wee, Barry Greenstein, Mark Gregorich, Brock Parker, Brandon Shack, Harris, Matt Glantz, Randy Ole. What a great group that was for event 63, the $10,000 horse championship. Event number 64, the online tournament, WSOP.com, online, no limit hold'em, $1,000 buy-in. And, of course, they played this online down to six and then brought those remaining six players in to play for the title and uh, they did not announce who those players were until we got to the uh you know, until they got here of course a lot of people knew a lot of them were but anthony spinella pulls away and wins a bracelet congratulations to anthony he beats out hunter Sichi, uh craig varnell andrew rose david tuthill and ryan franklin so your final six but anthony spinella wins his world series of poker bracelet congratulations to him as he takes down the online title. Way to go. Uh, event number 65, the $1,500 seven-card stud. High, low, eight or better is now over. Gerald Ringe from the United Kingdom has won a World Series of Poker bracelet. Congratulations to him. Or it could be Ring. This is British, guys. Well, yeah, we'll go with Ring. That just seems a little better. Uh, but uh, they had three coming back today. Beats out uh, Vich and Daniel Edema this afternoon to win event number 65. Congratulations to him. Uh, Noah Bronstein, John Esposito, uh, Wise Ahmed, John Cover, uh, Chris George, and Eric Rodowig uh, rounding out your top nine on that one. John Manette finishing 12th. 
Todd Brunson in 13th. Jesse Martin finishes 14th in that one. So uh, but we do have a one more bracelet winner here. Event number 65. There's Dan Highmiller, by the way. He knows the thing about winning bracelets. Good. I'm on right now, yeah. Would you like to say hi to everybody, Dan? Yeah, I'll say hi. Dan will say hi. And this is the fourth hey. anniversary, so, so I'm very happy to have Dan Highmiller on the show. Dan's playing on WSOP.com. I'm playing, um, I'm playing, and I'm playing the Super. I'm playing the Super here. Uh-huh. I'm on break from the Super, uh, which has about a thou- over 1,000 players right now. And I'm playing the WSOP.com for a sh- Super 2 on the Internet. Wow. So I can win two, two seats same, about the same time. I guess they'll be done about the same time. You are the man, Dan Heimiller. We all know this. Or I could lose two satellites, two, two super satellites <laughs> at the same time. Let's just win them both. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. They let you play at the table here while you're playing the tournaments. And, and, and probably they're going to do that uh, at all Caesars properties. Nice. That's my that's my guess. It makes what they get they get you you buy in twice. They they can't complain about that. Yeah, they're just they're just pulling money out of everybody right and left. So Dan, uh, you know, I know this World Series. Yeah, you know, been kind of up and down for you. What uh, what are your impressions about this year? Do you think it's been a different feel than what it's been like over the past couple of years? I think the percentage of good players is getting higher and higher. I think they get. I think what's happened is the internet kids instead of having uh, one year, two year, three years of experience, now they're now they're up to four to six years of experience. So so uh, um, that that makes a big difference because they they, they, they they get they're, they're refining their technique. So basically, I hate it. I mean, it's, it's basically, <laughs> I think it's a little bit higher percentage of good players. It used to be, it's just a little bit higher in all the tournaments. Is that why there's been a lot of, one of the reasons been a lot of tension in here? Because just the competition's been that tough this year for everybody? Um, everybody, I think everybody has, most people have a limited amount of, a limited bankroll. So, um when that gets low, they're, they're, everybody gets a little tense. I think that happens every single year. Um, I think when the World Series first was going, ten to f- over before the internet, maybe over ten, over what would that be? I don't know how. What, what was before the internet? Was that twelve years ago or ten years ago or twelve years ago? Yeah, maybe. 12 yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Um, I think poker players were a wealthier crowd. Now they're um, uh, both wealthy, but there's also a lot of middle-income people. So they, they, they have a limited bankroll. And uh, more likely than not, because uh, tournaments are hit or miss, uh, hit, they're hit or miss, uh, more likely than not, you're going to be ground down rather than pumped up. I, just I, the nature of the tur- poker tournament. Yeah, I don't want to say what Dan has right now. Did you win that hand? I, I don't remember what happened. Oh, I folded. Uh, I, I folded. Uh, I had hit the fold button. Uh, uh, you oh, know, okay. I hit the pre-fold button. Uh, because, uh, that was too bad. It was weak. It was weak. Did I? Yeah. I should have. Uh, should, should I? Should I rewind it? Because they, they show my cards. Yeah, I saw. I, I saw you would have hit. I would have hit the high hand. You would hit that big. Well, I got to go back and take a look. <laughs> it was a six-four offsuit. Yeah, it was six-four offsuit. No reason to play that. And it appears that the guy in the first position played, so I, I don't think I could have. And that's if it was just blind yeah. versus blind, I think it it would have been okay. I was small blind. Six lawsuits in the small blind with no razor. I, I would go and take a look. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, now how do I get out of this? Oh, the trick is stop. No, I want to get out of this. Oh, here, maybe this button does it. There we go. Dance back. <laughs> this is great. I've never had anybody play online poker. During an interview before on the show, this is pretty fun. I, I, I'm going to go back and see what the raising was like during this hand because I can rewind the hands. Oh, I was no, that was the wrong one. That was the previous one. Okay, never mind. I'll, I'll figure it out. I've got to go right. back. I've got to go back and look at this. Oh, they're playing the hand, so I'm going to go back. <laughs> and I'm going to try to find out whether I could have possibly got into that tr- got into that hand for any unknown reason. Uh, here it is, six four. Okay, now where's the rewind button? There it is. While you're doing that, Dan, by the way, uh, what day are you playing in the main event? Uh, what's your uh, doing one C or the last one? 
uh, that's so I can play as many super sat mega satellites as possible because I think they're very lucrative. The mega satellites. Uh, that's about it. I just so that's why I always play the last one, last day. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I feel I feel like I'm distracting you, Dan. I don't mean to. No, no, you're not. Okay. You're not. This is this is slow. I only got one table. Oh my God. The old days, uh, my average was eight, probably around eight tables. I used to play about eight at the same time. This is one table. This is like watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> there you uh, go. I have my phone. My phone app. The phone app only allows me to play one table right now, but of course it's. That's fine. That, you know. It's, yeah. Um. So hopefully in the future they'll get more than one table on a phone app. By the way, we're going to see you back down in Florida again, and you had a deep run in the main event down there at uh, Seminole Hard Rock last time around. You're going to be coming down again. Uh, definitely. All right. Definitely. That's a World Poker Tour and a lot of money. That's five million this year, huh? Five it is five million dollar guaranteed. Yep. Um. Yeah, that'd be uh, that'd be nice to. Uh, do well in that. I did do well in that. Then I got really close. Yeah, you went. You got really close. I think I almost made the five, the, the TV table. Yeah, you were like seventh happened? or eighth I in somewhere. What yeah, I, I, I was there. I mean, it was you finished what eighth ish somewhere in there like okay, that. Okay, that was eighth? it. That was the one. Yeah, that was the one. I think. Uh, yeah, I did come in like eighth, and so I just missed the television. Now well, this seems to be frozen, so I'm going to go back and try to figure this out. Um, Dan Heimiller playing uh, online poker on the show, everybody. Well, I go back to my. I gotta go back to the other super. Okay. The other, the other super All right. Well, good luck in both of them, Dan. Good right. luck in the main event. Thanks. All right, Dan Heimiller, everybody. <laughs> that was interesting. Dan Heimiller playing online poker on the show. Gotta love it. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I don't know if Al's gonna make it down or not. Looks like. A, let's see. Yeah. Okay. He's he's stuck writing. Okay. So I tell you what, I think we're because I would we were invited to go down to the uh, Pocket Fives little soiree down in the um, down the wine room here at the Rio. So I think we're going to call it an afternoon. But I uh, want to thank all of you guys for joining us. I want to thank you for a great four years so far on the show, and much more to come as we uh, look try and kind of take things to the next level. Starting this fall should be pretty exciting, but. Uh, so many people to thank, and, uh, you know, I, I couldn't do it. I mean, it's just too many of you. You guys all know who you are. Thank you for all the listeners and the sponsors and all our great friends of poker and the personalities that have made this show go. We do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thanks, Nate Dowling, especially uh, doing a great job co-hosting right now. And um, I think we're good. So that's going to wrap it up for us today from the main event here at the World Series of Poker. Guys, we'll be back here tomorrow for Day 1B, same time, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern. So thanks for joining us on the Mark Hoke Show, and we will catch you next time here live from the Rio at the WSOP. Have a great afternoon, and best of luck at the tables.